in the previous videos we looked at friction between a block and horizontal surface in this video we are going to look at the force of friction acting on a block when it is placed on an inclined plane the block is of mass 10 kilograms and the coefficient of friction between the block and the plane is 0 0.7 in part a of the problem this angle of the incline is 60 degrees and we have to find the magnitude of the force f when the block slides down steadily what does that mean it means that the speed at which it is sliding down is very small in other words there is no acceleration and therefore this problem is quite simple and straightforward because we can use equations of equilibrium so the first step in finding the solution is to draw a bd of the block so here is the abd of the block the weight mg acts downwards the force f is pulling the block upwards the normal reaction acting on the block due to the inclined plane is n and is normal to the surface this is the frictional force y is the direction of this force up the plane it is so because the block is moving downwards and therefore the force of friction would act in opposite direction therefore this is acting up the plane do we know the magnitude of this force yes we do the magnitude of the force of friction would be equal to mu times n so now having drawn the abd of the block and having set up the coordinates let us write the equations of equilibrium so first we draw the components of the weight one component will be like this another component will be like this this is parallel to the plane in x direction this is mg sin theta and this is mg cos theta similarly the force f would have two components one along the plane would be f cos alpha and another normal to the plane would be f sin alpha so now we are ready to write the equilibrium equations in the two directions so sigma fi is equal to 0 that is the sum of forces in y direction is equal to 0 which means n which is in positive y direction minus mg cos theta this is the weight component plus f sin alpha is in positive y direction the sum of all these forces in y direction will be equal to 0 and therefore n would be equal to mg cos theta minus f sin alpha the second equation of equilibrium in x direction is mg sin theta acting downwards in positive x direction f cos alpha is acting in minus x direction and similarly the frictional force fr is also acting in minus direction the sum of all these forces is equal to 0 we can substitute mu times n in place of frictional force this is the kinetic friction n is equal to mu times n and now we plug in the value of n from equation number 1 to get this expression simplifying this equation we get f is equal to this term on the right we put in the value of theta equal to 60 degrees and alpha 0 f would turn out to be 51 newtons and that is our answer we now move on to solving part b of the problem So, as compared to the previous problem, there are some minor changes in this problem. The angle of inclination of the plane is 30 degrees now, and the force also makes an angle of 30 degrees with the plane. And the magnitude of the applied force is given as 20 newtons, and we are supposed to find the force of friction. But there is a major difference. 
unlike the previous problem wherein we were told that the block is sliding down with a very small velocity here in this problem nothing has been specified about the block whether it is in equilibrium or it is sliding up or down so the situation is quite tricky how do we proceed well the trick is to assume that the block is in equilibrium how does that help well the assumption helps in applying the equations of equilibrium and then calculating the force of friction and after having calculated the force of friction there would be a need to check whether the law of static friction is satisfied so let us proceed and seek a solution so as you know the first step is to draw an fbd of the block so here you find the fbd of the block which is quite similar to what we drew in the previous problem we have shown the components of the the weight mg as well as the applied force f in two directions one along the plane that is the x axis and one normal to the plane that is the y axis a question arises what should be the direction of the frictional force since we do not know whether the block has the tendency to move up the plane or down the plane how do we determine the direction of the frictional force well the answer is we arbitrarily choose any direction and let the equilibrium conditions decide whether it is correct or otherwise in other words let's say we decide that the frictional force is acting up the plane and if our answer from the equilibrium equations comes out to be positive then our assumption about the direction of the frictional force is correct so let us write down the equations of equilibrium so the first equation is the sum of all the forces acting on the block in y direction is zero and this is a similar equation what we wrote in the previous example and this gives us the normal force equal to 74.96 newtons the second equation of equilibrium is the sum of forces in x direction equating it to zero and this is a similar equation but now we have to find out the frictional force the applied force is given is a known quantity and the unknown quantity is the frictional force and we work out this equation and the frictional force turns out to be 31.73 newtons since this answer is positive our assumption about the direction of the frictional force is correct that is it is acting up the plane but is that our final answer and are we done with the problem unfortunately not because we made an assumption that the block is in equilibrium but now we have to check whether it is indeed in equilibrium by checking if this frictional force satisfies the law of static friction so now we compute the maximum possible value of force of friction fr maximum you know that it is mu times n mu is 0.7 and n we calculated here 74.96 so this works out to 52.47 newtons and what we see is that the frictional force computed from the equilibrium conditions is indeed smaller than the maximum possible value of the force of friction so the law of static friction is satisfied and therefore our assumption that the block is in equilibrium is is valid so the actual force of friction is indeed 31.73 newtons so this is our answer and note that it is not mu times n now we move on to part c of the problem in part 3 again a little change has been made the angle of inclination of 
the plane has been increased to now 60 degrees and magnitude of the applied force has been reduced to 10 newtons and now we are supposed to find the force of friction acting on the block. Well, the problem is identical to what was in, in part B that is nothing has been specified about the block whether it is in equilibrium or in motion. So, make an assumption that it is in equilibrium and apply the equations of equilibrium and calculate the force of friction. So, the first step as usual is to draw an FBD. So, here is the FBD which is identical to what was drawn in part B. Here again I would like to tell you that the, the direction of the frictional force has been assumed arbitrarily acting up the plane and the calculations from the equations will tell us whether this assumption is correct or not. So, now we are ready to write the equations of equilibrium. The sum of forces in y direction gives us this equation which you are familiar with and that gives us the normal reaction force as 44 newtons. The second equilibrium equation for x direction gives us the force of friction as 76.3 newtons. Now, we are not done. This may and may not be correct. We have to check whether this satisfies the law of static friction. That is, we have to check whether it is less than or equal to the maximum possible frictional force. So, first we compute what is the maximum possible value of frictional force and that is mu times n and that n we have already calculated as 44 newtons and therefore, the maximum possible value of friction is 30.8 newtons and what we notice now is that calculated frictional force is much larger than the maximum possible. So, the law of static friction is not satisfied. Hence, our assumption that the block is in static equilibrium is not valid and the block slips. Hence, the actual frictional force acting on the block is the maximum possible value of 30.8 newtons and not the calculated value of 76.3 newtons. In which direction does the block slip? Well, that can be found out by examining the forces acting on the block. So, here is our block. We are now going to consider only the forces acting in x direction. So, mg sin theta x down the plane and if you calculate the value of mg sin theta, it will turn out to be 84.96 Newtons. This is mg sin theta. And which are the forces acting up the plane? One is the frictional force and that frictional force is 30.8 Newtons. So, 30.8 Newtons. This is the frictional force and the x component of the applied force is F cos alpha acting up the plane and the value of that force will turn out to be 8.66 Newtons. Now, if you add up these two forces which are acting up the plane, it is something close to 39 Newtons and the force acting down the plane is much larger 84.96 Newtons. So, the, the block will slide downwards with an acceleration depending on what is the net downward force and that net downward force would come out to be 45.5 Newtons. So, a net force of 45.5 Newtons is acting downwards causing the block to accelerate down the plane. So, thanks for watching and if you liked it, please give your thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.